All right, so I'm going to use Google Spreadsheets to um, walk you through some of this analysis, but I will tell you that Google Spreadsheets isn't quite sophi as sophisticated as Excel, so you're only going to do be able to do some of this assignment through Google Spreadsheets, and what's missing you'll need to be able to add later after you use the graphing features of Excel. Um, there are roundabout ways of do that with Google, Google Spreadsheets, but it doesn't come out as clean, so I'm going to push you to use the Fairfax County resources of Excel on the school computers, which you can access from any school computer. Um, so just like in the other video, I'll go through some of this beginning stuff and move a little bit more quickly, I hope. Um, to give you some background on the experiment that I'm going to be running data analysis on, uh, my research question is how does the amount of light exposure affect the height of fescue grass seeds? So I know fescue grass seeds are grass seeds that I put in my front lawn. That's what my neighbors recommend. That's what I've read as good recommendations for the location of my lawn. But doing some background research, not that this line is sufficient for your section of your labs, but um, if I distill down my research and I'm not citing anything, I know that fescue seeds are used for partially sunny and partially shady areas. So based on that knowledge, it's going to inform the levels of my independent variable. I'm not going to test um, things in this last uh, row here. It says I'm not going to test things between 0 and 100% light exposure. Instead, I'm going to narrow it down to right around the 50% range and measure within reason. So um, what I have is a sheet with some of my data. You can ignore this stuff. I'll talk a little bit about this section uh, down here, but we're really focusing on this part right here. This is my raw data. It's a 5x5 five five model. It doesn't tell you a whole lot as it is, so this would not be acceptable to turn in as a data table, but it is sufficient for us to run our analysis. So what I'm going to do is um, tell you that I don't ever want uh, graphs of your raw data. I want graphs of your process data because your raw data can be misleading. So I want you to note that all of these data points have consistent decimal places and they all end with a zero. Um, and that has to do with the uncertainty. So I want you to ask me about uncertainty in class. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and if for whatever reason your data when you put it in is not consistent in Google Spreadsheets, what you can do is click on Format, Number, and you can pick the type of number you want to put in, but it's set on number right now, and I'm going to go to more formats and custom number format. And if I want to change the number of decimal places, let's say if I put in a third decimal place, then I'm going to get a third decimal place in that number. But IB really cares about consistency here, and no matter, even if I went into this and deleted, well, I can't delete, the value that I had put in was zero. But if I put in 0 0.000, through when, and yet another zero, it's going to knock it down to the three decimal places. So before I move on, I want to change that. I'll go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, to data, to, excuse me, format number, more fat formats, and custom no number format, knock off a decimal place, and hit apply. Now I'm going to calculate means and standard deviations, but I want to make sure I know what I'm calculating for. So I'm going to select, I... You can either highlight, I click one cell, hold down the shift key, and then click the other cell, and it's going to select everything between those two points. Um, I'm hitting Control-C to copy it, and I'm going to paste it with Control-V over here. So I've got my headings here, and I want to calculate the mean. So when you use a formula, I can, of course, calculate mean by hand. I can calculate standard deviation by hand. But why would you want to when you have the technology um, to save you time? So to calculate the mean... What I'm going to do is um, you can inter insert a formula here by hitting equals and whatever. What I'm going to do is make it a little bit easier and go to insert function, and I want the average. So <clears throat> I type in the average, but it's asking me for what range of cells. So I'm going to select these cells because I'm in the 40% column, and then hit enter, and I get my average. And it's already at three decimal places because I've already pre-formatted that way. And so if yours doesn't come out that way, format it that way. If my raw data is to do two decimal places, I need to add one more decimal place for any process data. And this would count as process data. So I could repeat that same formula for this column, this column, this column, and this column. But 
um, spreadsheets is smart enough to know that if I want to pull this formula um, over here, smear it into um, this next column, I can just hover over this square to get my crosshairs, click down, drag to the right, and it's pulling the data from the next columns, and I've got my averages. Cut to collect um, my standard deviation values, I can do something similar. I can go to insert um, function, and I don't see standard deviation here, so I can click on more. It's just going to give me a list of them. I know it, so I'm just going to go ahead and type in this formula bar, stdev, and I'm going to put in column, I mean a parentheses. I'm going to pick my data values, my raw data. This is telling me the average value, essentially the average value of the distance of each of these data points from the mean, from the mean itself. So it's going to account for outliers in my data. I have a standard deviation of 1.230 for my 40% data set. And I'm going to do the same thing and pull that formula across. And now I've got my standard deviation values. <clears throat> now, as far as graphing goes, I want you to be able to, to watch this part of the Excel video, not the spreadsheets video. Because, like I said earlier, spreadsheets does not do a good job of um, making it easy to graph this data. So, I'm sure there's a way to do it. It's a lot more complicated than you might guess. So, what we're still going to do, though, is run your data um, analysis. So, you're still going to run an ANOVA test and possibly a t-test here. So, first what we're going to do is run an ANOVA test because I have more than two um, levels of my independent variable. You all have to have five, so you're all going to have to be running an ANOVA test at a minimum. And so the way you do that is that you need to get an add-on into, into Google Spreadsheet. It doesn't come automatically. So I've already added, it's called Excel Minor Analysis Tool Pack. But if you don't have that, you need to go to Get Add-ons. And then in the Search Add-ons, you're going to type in Statistics. And it's this first one, Excel Minor Analysis Tool Pack. And then you'll click on the Free button. You install it. And now it will be available to you in your add-ons every time you go through Google Spreadsheet. So you don't have to do this again. And I'm going to go ahead and, so once you get it installed, you go to Add-ons. You, cl you click on Start. And wait, wait for it to load. We're trying to run an ANOVA single factor first. The single factor indicates that you have one independent variable that's changing. And I need to select my input range. <clears throat> now, this works a little different than Excel. Um, I need to type in my range. So I know that all the data I want to select is in this top left section of my chart. And I, in fact, I am going to... Um, include the titles so that I'm a little bit more organized. So I know that I need to start in cell A1, which is right here, which is 40%. I'm going to put in a colon, and I'm going all the way down to E6. Oops, E6. Um, I know that I have labels in the first row, and I need to tell it, I'm going to leave alpha at 0 0.05, which will tell me a 95% confidence level. I want the output range to be... Let's say we're going to put it down into G18, cell G18. And then I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to run its data, and I'm going to go ahead and close this. We're going to scroll down. So this is all the data that it runs. It's a lot of information. Um, and I'll tell you that some of it's important, some of it's not for your analysis. Degrees of freedom is important. I want you to ask me about degrees of freedom. Um, and... Um, we're really looking at, yeah, we're looking at this degrees of freedom of, four, of 20. Um, so the numbers that you really need to know are these three, the, P, the F value, the P value, and the F critical value. So I'm going to highlight these, hit Control C, and I'm going to pull this up to this area right here. I'm going to write Danova, and I'm going to um, hit Control and V to paste that value in. Now, you notice there's a lot more decimal places, and I told you that we need to go down to three decimal places. So what I'm going to do is, first off, there are a lot of zeros in here. So I'm going to select that um, cell for the p-value, go to Format, Number, and I'm going to put it in Scientific Notation. 
And I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to reformat it. Um, or, you know, maybe let's do that for consistency. So we've got data, sorry, format number. I'm going to go more fa formats, custom format number, and I'm going to add another decimal place in there and hit apply. And now we've got three decimal places. So I need to do the same thing <coughs> for, um, for each of the other two cells. So just bear with me. I finish this real quick. Sorry, I'm getting confused between Excel and <clears throat> and um, spreadsheets. Okay, so I've reformatted these values, and if I'm using these rules of how to interpret an ANOVA test. I see that my F calculated, and I'll reformat this to F calculated. Now, F calculated value is, oops, F calculated value is six, 16, and my F critical value is 2.866. So my F calculated is, is larger than F critical. It is much larger, but that doesn't make a difference. All you know is that it's bigger, and because it's bigger, there is a significant difference. And that's very important language to say that there's a significant significant difference with a 95% confidence value. If it was the other way around, if my F calculator was smaller than my F critical, then I couldn't make that claim and I would say that there is not a significant difference. Not insignificant, that is meaningless in statistics. You need to say not a significant difference. But all that tells me is that one of these levels is different at least one of those levels is different than the others i just don't know which level so i need to be able to look in my graph and see that um now the other thing that i'm eyeballing and i'm visualizing this graph in my head is that i see the average values are different but i don't know if they're statistically different from one another when i look at this 50 percent average of 7.2 um, it is much larger than the others and when I look at the standard deviation of the other groups that are close to it, like this five, average of five is fairly close to seven, but it has a really small standard deviation. So I don't think that they're going to overlap. So what I'm going to actually do is test between the 50% and the 60% um, values with a t-test. This is when you compare two groups. So I'm going to go back into uh, my, my add-ons my analysis tool pack and click start. And I'm gonna scroll down to t-test assuming unequal variance. And my first range, again, I'm going back to my raw data, right? So I'm gonna test between 50% and 60%. So I want C1 to C6 and D1, oops, D1 to D6. Um, I don't need to worry about my hypothesis, hypothesis mean difference. But my lab, I got labels in the first row, and I want this data to go into M, no, I'm say M18. Okay, so I got my data here. Let's see what it tells me. Oh, I should have moved around because it's a little cluttered here. <clears throat> but um, some more information, but what's really important here is my T-stat and then my two-tailed P and T-critical values. Um, and we're going to analyze them in the same way, so I could move that around, but let me just go ahead and reformat all of it, reformat these values. So I don't care about this. I'm going to delete it so don't get confused. I want to reformat this to have three decimal places and same with this value
And I want to do this one in scientific notation. And have three decimal places. All right, so I'm looking at my T set of 5.6, and it's larger than my T critical of two tail, two tails, um, which tells me that there is a significant difference between my 50% and my 60% um, values. So the mean height is significantly different between these two groups. Um, I can also tell this because my P value is less than 0 0.05. So when you rewrite 4.75 times 10 to the negative three, it's far less than 0 0.05, and that makes a difference. That's what, another way to interpret um, T tessori novas. I'm using these two general rules. Um, this rule that's in this cell is highlighted in this one to interpret these two tests. Okay, um, and I hope that helps. Um, again, you're going to have to graph and follow the graphing rules in Excel. So I'm going to stop there.